Richard Galpin reporting. Now, the world's eight richest individuals, all men, have as much wealth as the 3.6 billion people who make up the poorest half of the world. That's according to Oxfam. The charity is calling for action to address what it's called a warped global economy, as it's revealed that there is a much wider gap in the distribution of wealth than previously acknowledged. Critics have called the claims misleading, saying the welfare of the poor is improving every year. Well, let's just show you who those eight wealthiest individuals are. It's on the, uh, the, the website. If you want to go to bbc.co.uk forward slash news, you can find these details. But there it is. Um, it's Bill Gates, uh, Amancio Ortega, Warren Buffett, Carlos Slim, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Larry Ellison and Michael Bloomberg. And there are the stats on uh, how much they individually are worth. Top of the list there. Bill Gates, $75 billion. Well, let's uh, bring in Ben Smallwood. He is um, Ben Southwood, head of research at the Adam Smith Institute of Free Market Think Tank, joining us from our central London studio. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's obviously a headline grabber. Is it a helpful way, though, to, to look at wealth and poverty? It's always interesting to have more data like this, and indeed it's come from Credit Suisse, the bank. They do a report on global wealth. But I think the message it's giving is misleading. So in their report, Oxfam focus on tech billionaires because they're making up an increasing number of the top richest people in the world. And they have a case study on Vietnam. Actually, both of these are good examples of why the global economic system is broadly working. Firstly, tech billionaires mostly make their money through creating products that benefit tens, hundreds of millions of people, such as Facebook in the developing world on mobile internet on um, traditional style mobile phones. And secondly, Vietnam. Vietnam is a good example. Since the 1980s, Vietnam has implemented lots of reforms, like China and India, um, liberal style market reforms. And they've seen their GDP per capita go up from $100 to $2,000 over that 20 to 30 year period. Now, everything isn't solved, but we're going clearly in the right direction. And Oxfam is misleading us by presenting a picture where the billionaires are taking from the poor rather than part of that improvement. And of course some of these men on this list are great philanthropists, most notably um, Bill Gates and, and Warren Buffett. Yes, so that's another side effect, although I don't think that the justification should be that they give their money away. We could take their money off them and spend it how we thought was best. Um, the point is that doing so would risk the very growth that sees living standards across the bottom improve. Um, do you think um, people are saying that, that the, the Oxfam report is misleading because global poverty is actually coming down. Do you, do you think that that is the case? Yeah, so in 1980, the number living under $2 a day was about 44% of the entire world. Um, now, correcting for inflation, that number is about 10%. Um, so clearly, 10% of the world, 700 million people perhaps, are living in these incredible extreme poverty, and there's so much more we can do. However, that 34 percentage points that we've seen come out of that extreme level, um, that's a massive improvement. And Oxfam really doesn't talk about this stuff at all. And, and what is it that has, has led to that drop in poverty? What are the lessons that can be learned? So the two biggest c contributors are India and China. As we all know, we've seen massive growth in those countries, largely due to their opening up to world markets and implementing reforms so that they weren't being run, run along an entire, entirely state-directed economy and they've got a more of a mixed economy with some markets, with some private capital, some capitalism. Um, so those are lessons that have worked. That's worked in Vietnam and various other countries around Asia and South America and so on. However, we haven't seen the same improvement in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, we have seen an improvement. Um, the number living on under two or one dollars a day has been coming down steadily over the last three decades. But this is where the biggest improvements have yet to be made. Thank you very much indeed.